What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone, or welcome to another live read, uh, read through. I never know how to intro these videos. I should probably do multiple takes, but I can't be bothered. Um, no, we are reading the leaks for the sixth epilogue. I cannot believe we're on epilogue six. I remember when I was first reading, uh, the first epilogue, and I was like, wow, this blew me away. I cannot wait to see where this goes. Like, where is this gonna go? And then we have, like, this whole... Saga of kids dying because they tried to get into the Pizzaplex early and then they faced the Mimic and now there's loads of Mimic lore. It's, it's, FNAF lore has evolved a lot since Tales from the Pizzaplex has come out, but um, yeah, I am really excited to see what's going to happen in Epilogue 6. We read Epilogue 5 uh, yesterday, we did an actual audiobook, so... Um, so that was exciting, but that, it, it wasn't too great. Apparently this epilogue is a little bit better, so a little bit more exciting. So we're going to get straight into it. Um, thank you to this person, Cube JSAB. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name. JSAB? JSAB? Um, I know you're in my server. I, I, it's really cool that we have, like, a lot of people from Reddit in my server. Like, I, I really like that. I, I respect that. So thank you guys for joining. Uh, you can join my Discord in the, in the description. Uh, and you can also subscribe, because that's, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's what I have to do. Um, help! The voice on the radio came through loud and clear. It filled the small office space so forcefully that Kelly exhaled sharply. So I'm assuming that this is the mimic again, mimicking people uh, and saying help. Uh, and pretending to, basically luring them into his grasp. Um, her breath created an air current that rippled the memos and children's drawings pinned to a bulletin board on the wall above the radio. Kelly had just finished installing a new electrolytic capacitor on the radio's workings, and when she heard the, f the crystal clear voice, she whipped her hand back and stared at the radio in awe. She'd fixed it. The voice asked for help again. The voice is clear, but it's the same voice from before. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the mimic. Lucia had been sitting cross-legged on the floor, flipping through a small crumpled notebook, got up. She crossed the room and leaned over Kelly's shoulder. The voice says, help me, I'm trapped in the old pizzeria. Okay. She shook her head. I thought I'd be able to fix it when you found those parts, but all I was a, able to do was clear up the local signal. I'm not getting outside the building, she sighed. I can't believe the mimic thinks we're going to fall for that trick again. A couple hours before, when they'd heard the garbled version of the voice, Kelly, Lucia, Adrian and Jace had thought they'd found others trapped in the old pizzeria with them. It was heartening to think that they weren't on their own. Even though Kelly tended to be a loner, she knew that in dire situations, strength in numbers was a real thing. Unfortunately, there weren't any others. There was just the Mimic, which had used the radio to lure them to a room off the area behind the stage. Yeah, I find this Mimic lore actually really, really interesting. I really like the fact that it mimics things. Like, we've kind of had... Like, Eleanor was kind of, like, mimicking other people, right? Because she had the heart-shaped pendant, um, which was kind of like illusion technology, so, like, illusion discs and stuff. Um, and that was kind of mimicking people. So we've, we've kind of had this mimicking theme for a long time, honestly, in the FNAF series, but uh, it's only kind of come into fruition properly into an actual character who is now 100% in the games. <laughs> so, wow. Um, the fact that they'd managed to run before the mimic got one of them was a miracle. Not that Kelly believed in miracles. With a hypochondriac mother who spent most of her time in bed nursing this or that, only in her head illness, and her father who was a workaholic police detective, Kelly's life hadn't given her any evidence of miracles. Yeah, we're getting Ke Kelly backstory. That's very interesting. That probably means she's going to survive, and that might mean that, she, that there's something sus about her, because remember, we, we thought there was something sus about her in epilogue th th or 4, I think? 3 or 4? Uh, all she'd learned from her experiences was two things. One, it was best to know how to entertain yourself, and two, really bad things happened. Lucy waved the notebook she held. I think I might have a little insight into how the Mimic's programming works. She opened the notebook and pointed at a page of penciled handwriting. Um, Kelly squinted at the smudged hen scratch. You can read that a little. Lucy pointed at a battered shoebox sitting on the floor next to the desk. This was in that box I found at the back of the bottom desk drawer, the one the radio parts were in. Apparently this notebook belonged to one of the engineers on the original Fazbear Entertainment animatronic creation team, the ones who built the characters that provided entertainment in the Freddy Fazbear's pizzerias. Edwin Murray. That has to be Edwin Murray. Okay. Right? That has to be Edwin Murray. So Edwin Murray was responsible for the characters. Like, we learn in the Mimic story that Edwin Murray was responsible for 
building some of the characters, right? I'm not making that up. I don't think so. Uh, all I remember was seeing Chica in that story, and I was like, oh my god, Chica's party world, the ring in her eye in the FNAF 3 ending. <laughs> uh, she flipped through the notebook and tapped one of its pages. I can't make it all out, but from what I can tell, when the team created the mimic line, they didn't want to have to program in every show routine step by step. That was a lot of coding, so they just programmed the mimic to basically watch and learn. There we go. Not only could a mimic fit into any costume, it was designed to observe the other routines and then mimic them. People are saying that the mimic is Endo 2 which I find really difficult to believe because I don't think Scott has had this mimic storyline planned since FNAF 2. Um, I do think it could be the Glamrock Endos though. I do think the Glamrock Endos could be the mimic uh, or multiple mimics, uh, possibly. Maybe without the Mimic 1 program or something like that. Maybe it's just the Endo and not the Glitch Trap. Uh, although Glitchstrap is in them in Security Breach, so that would be flawed. Um, Kelly raised an eyebrow. That sounds like tricky programming. Yeah, too tricky. I wish I could read all of this, but it seems like the original Mimic began mimicking not just the other animatronics, but also people. And it did in ways that weren't intended. I'm not sure what it did. Well, we now know. <laughs> I can make out the words misconstrue, scared, potential disaster, and deactivate remaining Mimic Endos. Wow, deactivate remaining Mimic Endos, so they probably didn't do that, and now there's loads of Mimic Endos. Uh, Lucia closed the notebook. I think the Mimic might seem like a malevolent creature to us, but it's really just a robot that was designed to copy what it observes. At some point, it must have seen so maybe something like a hide-and-seek game or whatever. It possibly can't reason that the trick would only work once. Maybe that's related to David Murray? Um, Mimic's still asking for help. Kelly looked at the radio. Maybe we can use this to our advantage. If it wants to lure us to it, it will be where it says, right? Lucia nodded. Her wild curls bounced. Brilliant. She reached out and picked up the mic. Where are you? She asked. I'm trapped in the janitor's supply room, the voice said. Well, now it's just being stupid, Kelly said. We searched that room. There's no way anyone is trapped in there. Clearly, its internal logic doesn't extend to reasoning out what we might or might not have done yet, Lucia said. Maybe, she stopped when a metallic thud sounded inside the duct, leading away from the vent opening under the table that held the radio. Kelly jumped up. Both she and Lucia retreated to the other side of the room. Right, they don't even know that another three people in their team are dead yet. That's crazy. Maybe it's smarter than we think, Kelly whispered. She stared at the vent opening. After Adrian and Jace had crawled into that opening, Kelly and Lucia had simply leaned the vent cover over the opening it wasn't attached whatever was coming toward the office through the duct would be would easily be able to get into the room maybe it's not the mimic lucia whispered back it could be adrian and jace kelly listened hard she heard a faint clunk followed by a skirt that sounded like fabric slipping over dusty metal she leaned she leaned toward lucia and whispered even more quietly into lucia's ear the, sh the sound is too uniform to be coming from two Whoever or whatever is in there alone. Lucia frowned and listened. She turned and glanced at the makeshift barricade blocking the office door. She looked back at Kelly who nodded. Without exchanging another word, Kelly and Lucia each took an end of the filing cabinet that was lying... Huh? Oh, that was lying... <laughs> that was lying on top of the desk shoved in front of the door. Kelly knew she and Lucia were thinking the same thing. If the mimic could fool them once, maybe it was doing it again. It made them think it was someplace else and was now trying to sneak up on them through the ductwork. They had to get out of the office. Kelly and Lucia set the filing cabinet on the floor and they started to move the desk. But they weren't fast enough. The vent cover fell onto the floor with a clatter. Lucia ran over and picked up the desk chair Kelly had been using moments before. She raised it above her head and stood by the table. <laughs> Kelly uh, continued shoving at the desk on her own, but she kept an eye on the vent opening when she saw a thick thatch of dishevelled black hair and a pale face with equally thick and black uh, framed glasses. She called out, wait, it's Jace. Unless the mimic is using Jace's body, just like Ennard <laughs> used Mike's. Um, Lucia exhaled loudly and set down the chair. She bent over and held out a hand to help their friend out of the duct. Where's Adrian? Lucia asked as she hauled the small skinny guy up onto his feet. One look at Jace's expression told Kelly all she needed to know about Adrian. The dust covering Jace's face was bisected by light trails running down from his eyes. Oh, they were tracks left by tears, Kelly realised immediately. Jace's red eyes and dull gaze confirmed her conclusion. Lucia, maybe because she didn't want to understand, took longer to realise the obvious. Jace? Where's Adrian? 
I feel bad for him. So do I. These characters are really well written, actually. I, I didn't give them much when it first started because they were like they were eight characters, I believe. So I was like, I don't really care about half of them. Um, Jay started to shake. He shook so hard that Kelly rushed over and helped him sit. Sorry, I had to move. Um, <laughs> I, it, I, I, I don't know why it happened so much. It's because I live in a house with my family, so I kind of have to move rooms because I share a bedroom. Anyway, yeah, it's it's weird. Um, once, he, once he was in the chair, she kept her hand on his shoulder to try to steady him. She leaned down and said, he's gone, isn't he? Jace leaned forward and put his face in his hands. Um, he started sobbing and babbling. His words were mostly incoherent, but one sentence was clear. I couldn't do anything. Oh. Lucia took a step backward and stared at Jace. Her face had lost all its colour. Her eyes were glassy. Kelly le uh, knelt down and put an arm around Jace. She had no idea what to say, but the guy clearly needed comfort. Whatever, what, whatever had happened, Kelly couldn't make sense of what he had been say of what he was saying had been bad. Um, Lucia suddenly rushed forward. She grabbed Jace's wrists and snatched his hands from his face. Get it together! What? Tell us what happened. Kelly blinked at Lucia's harsh tone. Then she got it. Lucia was coping with her grief by going right to anger. Kelly tried to calm her. Lucia, she said. Jace is in shock. I don't care, Lucia yelled. Lucia's outburst snapped Jace out of his stupor. He freed himself of Kelly's embrace and got to his feet. There was nothing I could do, he shouted back. Adrian was trying to get out through the fan, and he must have fallen. The mimic had him before I could even move. If I come out of my hiding place, I'd be dead too. Is that what you wanted? Yes, Lucia screamed. What? Are you kidding? Okay, okay, I, I get that people deal with grief differently, and I get that anger is something that... Uh, anger is a way to deal with it. Yeah, like, obviously people are going to get angry. Like, the five stages of grief, right? Um, but you don't lash out at someone and tell them to die. <laughs> like, that is very extreme. Like, you have a problem. Um, Jace blanched and blinked. Then he said softly, Well, you probably won't have to wait long. We're the only three left. Maybe I'll be next. Lucia didn't say anything. She just pulled up her fists and glared at Jace. Kelly sighed. Wade and Joel, you found them? She asked Jace. Jace looked her way and nodded. I think they'd been trying to get out through the fan too. We found their... We found what was left of them when we went to the systems room. Lucia turned and crossed to the other side of the office. She faced a yellowed, curling Fazbear Pizzeria poster and dropped her head. Uh, Kelly watched as Lucia's shoulders hunched and started shaking. The fact that Lucy had a crush on Adrian had been obvious to Kelly for a long time. Kelly never said much at school, but she observed. She was well aware of the dynamics between those around her. Hope had been pretty straightforward. She'd loved Adrian. Adrian had been equally transparent. He'd loved Hope back. Uh... Wade had loved Hope, too, but he tried to help hide it. Jace was crazy about Lucia, but Lucia only had eyes for Adrian. Joel had never seemed to care much about anyone but Joel. Kelly, <laughs> wait, that's a funny line. Uh, Kelly, if she had been honest with herself, had liked Nick, but Nick never showed any interest in her. Um, Kelly actually has emotions and feelings, yeah. Um, Want to know why Kelly wasn't too upset by others' deaths? Maybe because she'd been... The fingers on social life at school, or maybe she had been hardened by the stories her dad had told about his work. Kelly had been shocked by the other's deaths, but she wasn't devastated. Aww. Um, help, the voice on the radio said again. <laughs> I like this. Mimic, shut the fuck up. Um. <laughs> uh. Jay sucked in a breath and stared at the radio. His eyes got huge. Is that the Mimic? Kelly said. Um. Jace wiped his face. He found at the radio. But that means that we know where it is right now. Kelly finished for him right now. Or Kelly finished for him again. Yeah, he swallowed and adjusted his glasses. He rubbed his jaw, clearly thinking, glancing once at Lucia, who still stood with her back to the room. She cleared his throat. I had to call through a lot of the duck work to get back here, Jace said. I took a couple wrong turns and leaned more than I wanted, or learned more than I wanted to know about how the ducks are laid out. The ducks are old and some of the seams are rusting out, maybe on the verge of collapse, but they're mostly passable. When I was uh, in them, I got an idea, he glanced at Lucia's back. I was thinking we could lure the mimic into one of the rooms. I thought I could go into the room and wait until the thing came after me, then I could escape into a duct while you two block the door. 
Lucy a world around and glowered at, and glowered at Jace. That's stupid. Why wouldn't the mimic just go after you in the ducts? Uh, can expand and contract, remember? Um, Jace flinched away from Lucia's anger. I know, but it's the weight of it. I don't think the duct could hold it. As long as I could get ahead of the mimic, if it tried to follow me, I think the duct seams would fail, and the mimic would fall through the duct. Um, Lucia frowned and thought about that. She looked at Kelly. Kelly shrugged. You're the one who, re who read the user's manual, but it makes sense to me. And if we could convince the mimic we're coming to the janitor's supply room, we won't have to worry about it jumping out at us while we're setting up the trap. Lucia nodded slowly, then ignoring Jace, she walked over and picked up the radio's mic. Hello, Lucia said into the mic. Are you still there? The voice replied immediately. Yes, help. I'm trapped in the janitor's supply room. Okay, Lucia said. Stay where you are. We're coming to find you. Wholesome mimic moment. Thank you. <laughs> he still has his manners. Oh, that's great. I mean, he is mimicking other people. Don't forget that. Um, how nice, Lucia said in a, hot, in a voice heavy with sarcasm. It's a polite, murderous robot creature. One corner of Jace's mouth lifted up in a half smile. Kelly felt sorry for him. He so wanted Lucia to like him as much as he liked her. Kelly put her back to Jace and caught Lucia's gaze. Kelly used her head to indicate Jace. She raised her eyebrows and gave Lucia a pointed look. Apologise to the guy, Kelly tried to say with her expression. Lucia was quick to catch on. That was why Kelly liked her. Lucia scowled, and then she stepped over to Jace. She took his hand. I'm sorry I yelled at you, she said. Kelly didn't think Lucia sounded all that sorry, but the words were a start. We're all in shock, Kelly said, trying to help along the apology. We're not acting like ourselves. Lucia quirked her lips, but she nodded. It's okay, Jace said. I understand. Lucia was lying when she said she was sorry. She wasn't sorry. She was still ferocious or furious with Jace for letting Adrian die. But she didn't have time to indulge her feelings right now. Jace might have been a coward, but he had a good idea. And they needed to act on it while the mimic was waiting for them to come up to the, supply, uh, the janitor's supply room. We need a plan, Lucia said, and I think I have one. Lucia started telling Kelly and Jace about the key she'd found. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Kelly listened intently. Jace looked past Lucia's shoulder. His child-sized fingers kept fiddling with the drawing pens in the pocket protector. She knew he was itching to pull one out and retreat to a corner so uh, he could draw his way into oblivion. If only he could draw Adrian back to life. Wow, that's dark. <laughs> Every time Lucia let herself take in the reality of Adrian's death, she couldn't breathe. It felt like an invisible hand was reaching into her chest and crushing her heart. Adrian was gone. Adrian, who had been the shining light in her world since her family had moved to this miserable town, was gone. Lucia? Kelly said. Lucia summoned her willpower and she managed to take in a breath. What had she been saying? You were telling us about the key that you think goes to the deadbolt on the door to that storage room at the end of the back hall. Kelly said. Then you stopped talking. You might have stopped breathing too. Lucia forcefully pulled in another lungful of air. Sorry, I... She shook her head. Or oh, shook her head, sorry. Yeah, so since we can lock that room, I thought it would be best place for our trap. But we need to know whether there's ductwork to that room. The radio spit static. Then the voice said, Are you coming to help? I'm scared. Lucia snorted. Scared? Ha! <laughs> Kelly reached for the radio. Hang on, we're coming. It, can't, it won't be much longer. She looked at Lucia. Kelly's expression was tight. Her eyes were slightly narrowed and a furrow bunched between her brows. Lucia interpreted the look as judgment for what Lucia had said to Jace. She'd basically told Jace she'd rather that he'd died instead of Adrian, but that was true. No matter what she said now, Jace wasn't going to feel any better. And besides, they didn't have time to deal with Jace's feelings. Jace spoke, uh, Jace continued to fidget with his drawing pens and he continued to avoid Lucia's gaze, but he spoke. If I was oriented correctly, I'm pretty sure I crawled past the vent in that room, he said. It's actually exactly what we want. It's behind some boxes. I could see them through the vent grate. If we could get in there and take the vent cover off, but leave it propped over the opening, the mimic wouldn't even see it behind the boxes. And it's a smaller vent covering the, than most the others too. The Mimic might not even be able to get into it. Once the Mimic comes for me, I can run behind the boxes and escape into the vent while you two deadbolt the door. That could work, Lucia said. She pursed her lips. Like I said before, we don't know exactly how compact the Mimic can get, but hopefully you're right about its weight. 
Jace nodded about looking up, uh, without looking up. Why does it have to be you, Jace? Kelly asked. Being the bait is going to be dangerous. Maybe we should put our names in a box or something and draw for it. Jace lifted his head. He blinked at Kelly and gave her a small smile. That's nice, but no, it has to be me. I've been in the ducks. I know how to move through them. And I need, I need to do this. He flicked a glance at Lucia. Kelly sighed. Okay. She looked at Lucia. But what if the mimic is strong enough to break through a deadbolt? Um, Lucia thought about the question. It was a good one. The mimic was a powerful machine. It ripped apart human bodies as if they were made of gauze. It could very well snap a deadbolt. You have a point, Lucia said. We need to barricade the door too, Kelly said. How do you barricade a door that opens inward? Lucia frowned. She chewed on her lower lip for a few seconds or she ran possible options. Okay. I have an idea. Come on, Kelly. Help me move the desk. Where are we going? Jace asked in a pitifully small voice. Lucia blew out air and turned toward Jace. She didn't want to take the time to explain her plan. She just wanted to do it. But she knew Jace was scared and she had every right to be. Or he had every right to be. She forced herself to be patient. We need a couple tables. We need a long one bigger than the storage room doorway. We'll break off the legs so it's basically a slab we'll use to cover the door opening. Smart. Uh, then we'll need a smaller table, one with the width of the hallway. We'll use that to wedge the longer tabletop in place. We'll shove the smaller table between the longer table on the one side and the hallway wall on the other side. That way, even if the mimic breaks through the deadbolt, the doorway will be locked. Uh, I think we can find both tables in the employees lounge. That should work. So we need to get the tables ready, right? Like leave them in the hallway or something? Then Jace, you'll lure the mimic into the storage room and go for the vent to escape. While you're doing that, we'll close the deadbolt door and position the tables because we hope the vent will be too small or too heavy for the mimic to make it through. It will be trapped. She shifted her gaze to Lucia, right? That's it in a nutshell, Lucia said. Kelly and Jace were silent. No one moved. Lucia's patience ran out. She positioned herself at one end of the desk. If we're doing this, the first thing we need to do is move this desk. Kelly? Hang on a second, Kelly said. She picked up the radio's mic. Hello? Are you there? The radio was silent. Oh no. Lucia felt the muscles in her neck and shoulders clench. Her stomach constricted. Hello? Kelly repeated. I'm sorry we were delayed, but we're coming now. Uh, she leaned over the radio as if telepathically commanding the voice to come through its speakers. Nothing. <gasps> Kelly turned and looked from Lucia to Jace. The skin around Jace's eyes pulled inward. His breath started coming in quick little bursts. Kelly tried one more time. Are you there? She said into the mic. Lucia counted to five. Then she said, I think the mimic has caught on. Jace hugged herself, himself. Kelly sat down the radio's mic. Her hand was trembling. But it doesn't matter, Lucia said. The only chance we have is to trap it. She looked towards the office door. We have to get out there. When Lucia had agreed to Adrian's suggestion of a double date, Jace had been over the moon. He had fallen for Lucia the first moment he'd met her uh, on a rainy afternoon at, J a at Adrian's house. This is my new neighbour, Adrian had said when he'd introduced Lucia to Jace. And Jace was a goner. He wasn't sure what he had, what had gotten him. Was it the wild hair, the funky clothes, the sensual mouth? Maybe it was the one way one of Lucia's eyes was larger than the other. It gave her a quizzical look Jace um, thought was beyond charming. Maybe it was none of those things. Maybe it was in her mind. She was the smartest girl Jace had ever met. She thought in ways no one did. He was aware, he was in awe of her. He had been so excited about the double date. He thought it was going to be the start of their future together. So one of them is going to die. <laughs> um, I think. Wait. Yeah, 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 surely. Jace understood now that he and Jace, uh, he and Lucia had no future, not even if they survived, and he didn't think the odds were that great that they were going to make it. Not him anyway. The real reason he'd insisted on being the bait for their trap is because he didn't want to, he, he didn't think the bait would have lived, would live for long, sorry. For the moment though, he let himself enjoy watching Lucia. He loved the way she moved. She always walked with purpose, her head on shoulders tilted slightly forward as if she couldn't wait to get where she was going. Now she led Kelly and Jace down the red walled hall toward the door to the employees lounge. Her head swiveled right and left as they passed the torn poster of Freddy Fazbear. From the tilt of her head, Jace could tell Lucia was listening hard. So was Jace. Okay. Interesting. That's, that's cool. Oh, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, Evie Devi. 
or easy TV. <laughs> uh, th this is a this is a map of the pizza place, which is really cool. Um, based on the epilogues, of course, and I feel like it's really thought through, right? It kind of looks like the FNAF one location a little bit, just a little. I mean, I I'm just seeing like these corridors that like there would be an office here. Like I don't know, it, it just it seems similarly shaped, but you know, I I think it's just the regular i don't think it is actually the fnaf one location uh, it took just a couple of seconds to reach the doorway to the employees lounge lucia led the others through the shadowed opening lucia was stepping carefully but hiking boots weren't the stealthiest of shoes her rubber soles scuffed the dirty tiles making a rough sliding sound jace and kelly were quieter they tiptoed around the crumpled papers and flattened paper cups that were scattered over the floor a few feet into the room lucia stopped and looked around her gaze landed on a long table leaning against a few of the black metal doors or metal lockers she motioned for Kelly and Jace to follow her, and she headed that way. A faint clink froze Lucia mid-step. Jace and Kelly stopped too. Jace's breath caught at the black back of his throat. His legs quivered, and he clutched Kelly's arm. Kelly didn't protest. She didn't move at all. No one spoke. Um, here's where stuff gets real. Okay. What direction had the sound come from? Jace thought the noise had originated from someplace close. Could something in the ductwork have made the sound? Air did move in there. Metal expanded and contracted. Could that have been the source of the sound? Lucia looked up at the recessed ceiling lights. Though dim, they were steady. Jace knew what she was thinking. Lights always flickered when the mimic was close. How could it? How close could it get before they flickered, though? Jace had never paid enough attention to answer that question. I just thought something really, really strange. In Ultimate Custom Night, when Scrap Trap is coming through the vents and you have to like quickly shut the vents so that Scrap Trap doesn't come out and kill you, don't the lights flicker? I swear they do. I might be making that up, but I swear there's like the banging noise and the lights are flickering. And if you don't shut the vent on time, Scrap Trap jump scares you. I swear that is that. I don't know what on earth that would mean. <laughs> um... But that's interesting to me, at least. I, I I feel like there's something there. That's that's weird. There's some sort of connection there. Um Where was I? Jace rotated slight uh silently and peered into every shrouded part of the room. Uh he squinted at the couple hoats coats hanging in the opposite corner in the corner opposite the lockers, sorry. Were they coats? Jace had already seen that the mimic could get into out and into and out of the costumes. What if the seemingly limp empty shelves sleeves uh, in the corner weren't empty at all? Lucia had apparently decided it was safe to continue. She took another step and another. Kelly and Jace began moving forward again too. Lucia was now passing a locker door that was slightly ajar. Jace's gaze zeroed in on the two-inch gap that revealed absolute blackness within the locker. Had that locker been open when they'd been in here before? The last time Jace had been in this room, he'd been scared out of his mind. He had a vague memory of standing with his back to the lockers. Had they all been closed then? He couldn't remember, but something about that locker. The locker door twitched. Lucia! Jace shouted. Lucia whirled, her eyes wide, her face flushed. Jace couldn't tell if she was scared or angry. Probably both. What? Lucy began. The lights flickered. The locker door shot all the way open. Metal slammed against metal. The room went dark. Um, Kelly immediately j uh, jerked Jace around. He stumbled, but stayed upright as she hauled him back the way they'd come. Jace wanted to call out Lucia's name, but he couldn't get his voice to work. His throat had closed up. His mouth was dry. Another bang, a scrape. The familiar tap, hiss, rasp, pounding footsteps, a loud crash and a grunt. Kelly whisked Jace out into the front hall. There, the lights were still on. Jace tried to turn back to see if any of that light could pierce through the inkiness in the lounge so he could see Lucia. Kelly didn't give Jace enough time to look. She immediately hauled him down the hall toward the office. She didn't enter the office though, she just pulled the door closed. Then she turned around and raced with Jace in, in tow down the main hall toward the lobby. As she went, she closed every open door. Jay strained to hear the sounds coming from the lounge. He heard the crunch of wood, a slap, a slithering sound. Um, Jace tried to free himself from Kelly. He had to go back and help Lucia. She, he knew she was still alive because he hadn't heard her scream. Maybe she was hiding. He needed to get to her. Kelly, however, wouldn't let Jace go. When he wriggled his arm, she clutched him tighter. They'd reached the lobby when the resounding whack of a door slamming uh, preceded thundering footsteps. Jace wanted to cheer. He knew that sound. 
Lucy was tearing down the hall after them. Even as Kelly dragged him toward the dining room, Jace watched Lucia coming toward them. It's not a total loss though, he winced. Lucia's face, rigid and white, was streaked with blood that ran down over her forehead from her hairline. Oh, wow. Jace whimpered when he realised that Lucia's scalp was torn. She was missing a chunk of her wonderful curly black hair. Lucia caught up with Kelly and Jace when they were just a few feet into the dining room. We have to hide, she hissed. The closed door won't slow it down. Uh, she wiped blood from her eyes as she dashed toward a pile of rubble outside the door of one of the party rooms. Back there, she said. Kelly apparently agreed with Lucia's course of action because she immediately tugged on Jace's arm and led him around a stack of concrete blocks so they could anchor in next to Lucia, who was already tucking herself behind a tangle of endoskeleton parts and broken lumber. Um, yeah, lumber. Why is lumber part of the endoskeleton pile? Yeah, what is what is wood doing here? Woodland Toy Freddy? Uh, Lucia curled herself into the smallest space possible to make room for Kelly and Jace. They squeezed in next to her. They all attempted to slow her breakneck pace and much too loud breathing. The tap hiss rasp they all knew sounded uh, they all they all knew too well sounded from beyond the lobby. Kelly gripped Jace's hand, the dining room lights flickered and went out. Lucia wasn't sure how long they'd crouched in the blackness. One minute, ten, an hour? Time stopped having significance when you were hiding in the dark. Every muscle in Lucia's body was bunched in readiness to flee. Adrenaline made her so jittery she could barely stand being in her own skin. Warm wetness continued to flow down Lucia's face. She made no move to staunch it. Even though she was trying to be silent, Lucia couldn't hold her breath. Her lungs were desperate for air. She tried to take in tiny breaths, but she could hear herself inhaling and exhaling. She could hear Kelly and, Lu and Jace too. Could the mimic hear them? Lucia closed her eyes and thought about the user's manual she read. Unfortunately, the manual had been miserably lacking in details about the mimic. She understood its ability to change its size and configuration to fit into different costumes. She understood its strength, but she knew little about its sensory processes. How well did it see and hear? Lucia's eyes flew open when a hand closed around her wrist. She flinched, but immediately realised it was only Kelly. Okay. <laughs> False alarm. She also realised that the dining room lights were back on. Okay. Come on, get to the good bit. <laughs> Lucia tilted her head and listened. She could hear the barest hint of the tap hiss rasp in the distance. The sound was heading down the front hallway. The mimic was retracing its steps and going toward the office. Maybe it thought they were hiding in one of those rooms. Maybe it intended to get a different costume from the part and service room. Um, Lucia had only, been a, uh, had only seen a brief glimpse of the mimic when it had erupted from the locker in the employee's lounge. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Miska, Muska, Mimic Mouse. Uh, <laughs> so random. That that glimpse had revealed what had looked like an upright grey mouse, maybe. Lucy had been more concerned about jumping out the Mimic's reach than trying to label its costume. The Yeah, it's not all about labels, guys. Uh, the Mimic always, almost had her. It had grabbed her by the hair and twisted. It had... If it had gotten a grip on her head, as it obviously intended to do, she wouldn't have her head any longer. Thankfully, her thick black curly hair had missled, uh, has missed the mimic, I guess. Uh, it had painfully relieved her of a good hunk of that hair, but at least her head was still connected to her neck. She'd been able to scramble out of the mimic's reach and thrash her way out of the lounge before it caught up to her. Lucia continued to listen. Now she couldn't hear anything except her breathing and that of Kelly and Jace. Okay. Lucia lifted her hand and held it flat in front of Kelly, a signal for them to wait a little longer. They needed the mimic to get as far from the dining room as possible. Lucia counted to 63 times. Oh, Lucia counted to 63 times, I think. Oh, like, that's a really weird sentence. Um, when they were all on their feet, Lucia immediately took off, fasting, uh, moving as fast and quietly as possible, skirting around one of the piles of body parts. She headed toward heaps of broken furniture. Lucia picked up a one-legged chair, carefully set it aside, and pointed at the long table. This is what we need, she whispered. Lucia looked toward the archway to the lobby. The lobby lights were on steady. No sound came from the hallway. With any luck, the mimic was at the far end of the hall. Would it hear the noise they were about to make? Lucia looked at Kelly and Jace. Jace was shivering. He was barely holding it together. Kelly was stoic. We need to get the legs off that long table, Kelly explained. We'll carry it down the hall and then lean... Uh, it against the wall by the door to the storage room. We also need that smaller table. Lucia gestured at a two-seater lying on its side against a pile of endoskeleton parts. The little table still had all four of its legs. Kelly, do you think uh, you could lift that? Lucia asked. Or drag it. 
I think it's just the right size, Kelly nodded. That looks pretty light, she said. I can handle it. Okay, good, Lucia said. We're going to need to do this fast because we're going to make some noise. If I kick off one of these table legs, can you manage the other one? Jace wiped his nose and looked at the other table leg. He nodded. Good. Once the legs are off, we'll take uh, an end and I'll go backwards. You go forwards. Move as fast as you can. I'll keep up. Betty, you can go ahead and start carrying your table to the back storage room. Wait, she leaned over and grabbed the hem of Lucia's long skirt. Before Lucia could protest, Kelly ripped the bottom of the skirt. She tore off a strip of fabric. If we don't stop that bleeding, Kelly said, pointing at Lucia's head, you're going to start feeling pretty faint. Lucia frowned and started to shake her head. She was immediately dizzy. Okay, maybe Kelly had a point. Lucia let Kelly grab a, uh, wrap a strip of the skirt around Lucia's head. The fabric scraped at the raw wound. It stung and Lucia's eyes moistened. <laughs> Great. She blinked the tears away. Okay, Kelly said. That should do it. She stepped back and studied Lucia. And now you look badass, doesn't she, Jace? Jace flicked a shy glance at Lucia. Like a warrior goddess, he said. Lucia snorted. Now, Kelly, Lucia said. You need to go. What? <laughs> Glam Lucia confirmed? Okay. Uh, Kelly nodded. She picked up the table and began carrying it, legs away from her through the dining room. Okay, Lucia said to Jace. Let's do this. Lucia positioned herself next to one of the long table legs. She waited for Jace to move over to the other leg. On three. One, two, three. She swung her foot back and kicked the table leg. Jace did the same. The wood legs cracked. Lucia and Jace kicked again and the legs broke away from the table. As soon as they did, Lucia bent over and lifted one end of the table. Jace quickly hefted the other end. Lucia started walking backward as fast as she could. Jace trotted forward. They carried the table past the other broken furniture and past the pile. That was weird. And past the piles of metal and flesh and blood body parts. Um, Jace helped Lucia prop the tabletop against the wall next to the storeroom door. Kelly pushed her little table into the open doorway of the systems room. Jace tried not to think about what was beyond that door. Three people had known uh, we're in. Three people he'd known were in pieces inside that room. If he let himself think about it, he wouldn't be able to function. Okay. Uh, she looked at the tables. I don't think the Mimic will think anything about these tables. I doubt its ability to reason is that advanced. I hope you're right, Jay said. His voice cracked on the word hope. He was afraid of how... He was ashamed of how terrified he'd sounded. Lucia, however, surprised him by touching the back of his hand. The ferocious expression she had worn uh, since she'd uh, come barreling out of the employee's lounge softened for an instant. Are you sure you want to do this? I can be the bait instead. Jace nodded. He was so scared. He was afraid he was going to pee his pants, but he wasn't going to wuss it out now. Okay, Lucia said. We should do this before the Mimic finds us all here. She turned toward Kelly. I think you and I should go to the arcade. There are plenty of pieces to hide there, places to hide there, and we'll go see down the hall. We'll know when the Mimic is heading toward the storage room, and it will only take a couple of seconds to run down the hall, lock the door, and position the tables to block it. Kelly nodded. Lucia rotated back to Jace. It's all you now. Get the Mimic into the storage room, and then get into that duct. Make sure you're really fast. Really fast. Yeah? Um, Jace nodded. His bowels... F I'm concerned about this, first of all. Jace nodded. His bowels felt like they were shriveling up inside his belly. Like I said before, after the mimic follows you into the room, Jace... Um... Oh, okay. I'm really... I don't know English. Like I said before, after the mimic follows you into the room, Jace, Kelly and I would deadbolt the door and use the tables to barricade it. Um... If he thought any more about what he was going to do, he wouldn't be able to do it. Lucia seemed to understand that. She reached out and patted his shoulder awkwardly. Okay, let's do this. Her eyes were soft as if she fully understood the complexity of his feelings right now, longing for Lucia's caring and approval, his regret, his dread. Uh, go, Jace said. Kelly looked like she wanted to hug Jace, but she didn't. Neither did Lucia. They both just turned away. Wait, Jace flirted. Lucia and Kelly rotated back toward them. Before he could talk himself out of his whim, Jace reached out and grasped Lucia by the shoulders. Quickly pulling her close, he kissed her. Oh, That's actually kind of cute. Oh no, one of them's gonna die. Oh no. Um, and it goes into detail, okay. Well, I thought this would be death, so this is, this is probably better. I prefer kissing than dying. 
Yeah. Um, Jace had never kissed a girl before, so he wasn't sure what he was doing, but he knew right away that his kiss wasn't the tentative kiss of a shy boy initiating his first kiss. His kiss was firm and long and passionate. It was a hero's kiss. It was a kiss that let Lucia know how he felt in case he didn't make it and was never able to tell her. For several long seconds, Jace put all his focus on Lucia's soft lips. What, and Kelly's just standing there? <laughs> Third wheeling, uh, he savoured the warmth of being so close to her. He lost himself in the moment willing it to last forever, but of course it didn't. Chase ended the kiss and let Lucia go. She stumbled back a step and gaped at him. She didn't even agree. <laughs> okay, okay. He half expected her to slap him, but when she didn't, Jace said quietly, now go. Lucia blinked at him. Her eyes were moist. Then she turned and gestured to Kelly. Together, Kelly and Lucia trotted down the hall. Jace watched Lucia's skirt swish as she ran. He watched until Lucia and Kelly crossed through the dining room and disappeared behind an arcade machine near the small stage. For several seconds, Jay stood in the distance. He concentrated, breathing in and out. I can do this, he told himself. Seven excruciatingly long minutes later, Jace was thinking their whole plan, or rethinking their whole plan. Why had he volunteered to be the staked goat? What was he thinking? He wasn't a hero. He was a runt who liked to play with crayons. Or at least that's what his dad said all the time. It didn't matter that Jace had outgrown crayons a decade before. His dad still saw Jace as a little kid drawing pictures. Jace would have stopped drawing by now if it hadn't been for his mom and his favourite uncle, both of whom told him daily how talented he was and what a brilliant artistic career he would have. Their encouragement had been like a bullet. Proof vest. Oh, bulletproof vest. <laughs> I have to, like, puzzle everything. That protected Jace from his father's scorn and from the school bullies who frequently stole his sketches and tore them up just to be mean. Even without his mum's and uncle's reassurance, though, Jace would still have drawn pictures. He had to. It was a compulsion. No, it was like breathing. It was essential to his existence. So much so that Jace was sorely tempted to get out his sketchbook right now. His nerve endings had turned into needles. He didn't know how many nerve endings his body had. Hundreds? Thousands? Millions? Probably more like billions, but okay. It felt like that... Uh, it felt like that many print pricks were assaulting his skin, multiplying every time Jace had heard even the tiniest sound. After Lucio and Kelly had run down the hall, Jace had hurried into the storage room preparing for his escape. Thankfully, the st small storage space was lit by one weak overhead light bulb. The bulb revealed a space packed with boxes and toys, or at least Jace thought they were toys. Small plush mechanical animals and floppy dolls lay among the boxes. One of the dolls... One of the dolls had red pigtails and big round eyes that seemed to look right at Jace. Okay. For a second... I thought that was Eleanor. <laughs> for a brief second, it was very brief, but for a brief second, I thought it was Eleanor. No, it's Baby. It's Circus Baby. Um, shoving search... Uh, shoving... What? Shoving searched for the vent cover. She, he'd spotted... What? Uh, when he was in the ductwork, he found it quickly. A lot of this doesn't make sense, I'm sorry. <laughs> he thought he was going to have to unscrew the vent cover, and for that purpose, Lucy had given him a screwdriver she'd taken from the toolbox in the dining room, but Jace didn't need it. The vent cover was rusted and bent. All Jace had to do was give it a kick and popped away from the wall. Jace moved a couple of other boxes. Uh, because he didn't have the guts to wait until the Mimic happened to find him, Jace decided to make sure the Mimic knew he was there. Um, he took a deep breath, opened his mouth, and bellowed, Ouch! Stop that! You stepped on my foot! Grabbing the end of the tabletop, Jace pulled it away, stepped from the wall, and slammed it back again. The bang echoed down the hall. Come and get me, Jace had thought. Jace didn't know how artific artificial intelligence worked, but he decided the programming that drove the mimic slaughter might be advanced enough to suspect a trap if it spotted a human loitering in a hallway doing absolutely nothing. Jace, therefore, had spent the next three minutes pretending to fiddle with a storage room doorknob. Now his shoulders had back ached, and back ached from being in the hunched position and from holding his terror at bay. How long is this? Oh my gosh. I swear I've been recording for like an hour. <laughs> These usually take like 40 minutes. Maybe it's because, um, like, you are you are very good at, uh, at live reading. But uh, this is very long-winded. Like, I'm sure you could have, like, more cherry-picked more detail. Like, uh, you know, you know what I mean. Like, you, you could have shortened it a little bit, but it's fine. Uh, we basically have the whole epilogue. <laughs> Um, so he was about to give up on the subterfuge when he had a crack. Chase went still. He put all his in concentration into his ability to hear. The creak sounded again, and he heard what he'd been waiting for. Tap, hiss, rasp. 
The mimic was coming, the pinpricks turned through a gazillion stiletto knives, impaling Jace's skin. His heart rate quadrupled. Sweat slid down the back of his neck. Jace shifted his head infinitesimally. Can't say that word again. Um, just enough to look down the hallway from the corner of his eye. At first he saw nothing, then he spotted a shadow stretching out from the open doorway to the employee's lounge. Another tap, hiss, rasp, and there it was. Meow! <laughs> Sonic. Uh, the mimic, in a frayed yellow cat costume, stepped into view. The cat's head, its pointed ears torn at the ends, its whiskers bent, turned slowly. It looked down the hall directly at Jace. The hall lights flickered. Even though Jace had been waiting for the mimic, expecting it, Jace let out an involuntary yelp. The hypothetical scenario had been one thing. The reality was another. Jace's adrenaline system went into overdrive. He flung, into the, he flung the storage room door open and he dashed into the room. He slammed the door behind him. Jace didn't have to hear the mimic's tapping footsteps getting closer to know the creature was coming down the hall after him. Even if the mimic had been silent, Jace would have been aware of its approach. He could feel the thing's homicidal intent scourging uh, scourging, scourging through its body as if the mimic had already started tearing Jace apart. <sighs> Jace paused and started to focus. He ran through a small maze of boxes and crouched in front of the exposed rent opening. There, he paused and listened. The storage room door flew open. It slammed against the wall. The small wind went black. Jace dropped to his hands and knees. He felt for the sides of the vent. When he was oriented, Jace pushed his head and shoulders through the small opening, fighting nausea and full body tremors, struggling to draw enough air into... Uh, into... Jung's lungs constricted by panic, Jace wormed his way forward. Oh my god. <sighs> this is hard to read. <laughs> it's so much reading. Um, okay. Breathe. Uh, Jace had been funneling all his attention to his ears, so they were working overtime. They provided him with an ongoing accounting of every step the mimic took. Every step you take. Now the mimic was close, only a few feet away. Its footfalls weren't taps. They were resounding thuds. The storage room floor shook every time the mimic took a step. Once Jace felt his feet slide through the vent opening, his lungs relaxed just a little. His full body was now in the duct. He'd done it. He'd gone into the duct before the mimic got to him. Now all he had to do was keep crawling as fast as possible. That, however, was easier said than done. Jace could feel beneath his groping hands that the duct seams in this part of the duct work um, were barely holding together. Every time the mimic took a step, the duct rattled, and the seams groaned and plinked as if giving up their connection inch by inch. Jace was being thrown around inside the duct as it vibrated in response to the mimic's pounding advance. On his stomach, though, Jace was able to keep moving forward. He just hoped the duct would hold long enough to him, for him to reach a more stable section of the metal. Why does it say labyrinth? Oh, to reach a more stable section of the metal labyrinth. Okay. Um, this The seams in this part of the duct were weak, the rivets coming loose. As he wriggled forward, Jace strained to hear what he was waiting for. He listened for the bang of the door and a snap of a deadbolt sliding into place. And he did. Yes, Jace thought exultantly. Their plan had worked. Uh, Jace shifted his eyebrows and pulled himself a few inches forward. It was a few inches too far. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, as Jace crawled over the next seam, his shirt sleeve caught on the two loose on on two of the loose rivets. When he pulled himself forward, the fabric popped the rivets completely free. Jace heard them ping off the vent's metal walls. Suddenly the duct was filled with the grinding speech screech of metal shearing away from metal. Two more rivets were torn loose from the seam and the seam failed. The section of the duct that Jace was in disconnected from the next section. His portion of the duct shook sideways, and then it canted sharply. Jace began side sliding in reverse. Scrabbling for purchase, Jace tried to splay his palms against the metal, begging it to hang on to him. His fingers encountered a sharp edge that sliced into his skin. Jace suppressed a cry. As he realised what was happening, he was falling back toward the storage room. Jace fought the pull of gravity. He ignored the pain in his hands. He didn't care how badly he was sliced up. Falling through a break in the ductwork was nothing compared to being returned to the storage room and the mimic. For a few seconds, Jace was able to hold himself in place. He gasped for a breath and grunted, attempting to pull himself upward to the broken end of the duct. He made it one inch, two inches. And then something hard and cold clamped around Jace's feet. Searing pain encircled his ankles. 
Uh-oh, Jace was yanked backwards so fast he didn't have time to scream. He didn't scream until he was wrenched free of the vent and his legs were rest rested, rested from his body. Then he screamed, but not for long. Kelly and Lucia... Wait, so he's dead now. Jace is dead. I knew it, I knew it. I, I knew it, honestly. Jace or Lucia had to die and Jace was alone. So... <laughs> yeah. Um... Kelly and Lucia had shared an exulting hug as soon as they'd crammed the small table into place. We did it, Lucia breathed as she and Kelly clutched at each other in triumph and whirled at each other around. It had worked. The storage room door was deep, uh, was dead bolted. The tabletop blocked the door and the small table wedged the tabletop tight so it couldn't be pushed away, even by a superhuman mechanical creature. Uh, Lucia and Kelly had pulled apart. They'd exchanged a look. Lucia had suddenly remembered Jace. Clearly, Kelly has had as well. Come on, Jace. Lucy had whispered as she trained to listen beyond the newly constructed barricade. All manner of thumps and bangs and cracks had been coming from inside the storage room. It was impossible to separate them into a narrative. Was Jace getting away? He'll probably head back into the office, Kelly had whispered after a couple of seconds. Lucia nodded. She and Kelly had turned to start down the hall so they could go back to the office to meet Jace. But they only took three steps before they understood that Jace wasn't going to make it to the office. Jace's scream undulated through the entire building. It caromed off the walls and echoed down the hallways. It rang through every room. It speared through Lucia's skin and ripped through her whole body. His scream went on and on, sounding and resounding, and then it stopped. Kelly and Lucia once again fell into each other's arms. This time, they held each other in despair. Whoa. That is an amazing ending. That, that, like, wow. This, this is fantastic it ran through every room it speared through lucia's skin and rippled through her entire body amazing so amazing um so we got two people left we got kelly and and lucia oh where could this go i feel like next epilogue it's gonna change it has to right it absolutely has to because what, one of them's going to die and then it's just going to be someone alone? We still have, bear in mind, we still have at least three more epilogues. Because we, we know that there's at least nine books. Interesting. Well, I thought this was really good. I thought it was uh, probably, yeah, I think it was more... I don't know. I can't tell if it was more or less good than the last one, really. Uh, I feel like it had some great moments but I think all of them kind of have good moments and bad moments. But like, you know, it's good. I think as a whole, the epilogues as one story is incredible. It feels so cinematic, especially with like the first, like the, the prologue, like the introduction um, where they're like, shut the door, shut the door. Um, I, I I feel like this is really, uh, it's really good. And I'm, I'm wondering where it's going to go next time because... It feels like it should change at some point, right? There has to be like a perspective change or there has to be, hmm, I don't know what's gonna happen. I feel like maybe, maybe one of them, like is Kelly gonna escape? I kind of feel like Lucia is the center of this story though, right? I feel like Lucia is kind of, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this. I thought it was pretty good, but uh, Thank you guys. Uh, thank you to Cube for reading through this. Um, I know you've already done Nexi, but <laughs> for the future, I would say try and like. I know you're using Google Lens um, to to pick up on like to just like copy and paste. But like, I, I feel like it's more fun if um, you like describe some things in, in your own words instead of just quoting everything. Um, but you know. It's all, it's all good. I, I think Enton does a really good job with them. He's he's done quite quite a lot at this point. And I think Enton is like very good at it now. Um, but not to say that these people who are doing the new ones aren't good at it. Uh, it's just, yeah, there's a few things to improve on, I think. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in another video. Goodbye. <laughs>